Hi everyone, my name is Angelos and I'm a PM for .NET. Uh, today we're going to look at how Visual Studio helps me integrate my application with Azure services. We're going to look at how to get our code base configured correctly. We're going to look at how to emulate Azure services locally during local debugging. We're going to look at how to publish our application to Azure. And finally, how to deal with the situation of maybe I want to connect my application to different instances of services for different environments. So let's jump right in. So here I am in the Connected Services tab. Uh, and I can get back here by just double clicking on the Connected Services node in Solution Explorer at any time. So this tab is split into two parts. The bottom part is called Service References, and that helps me connect my application to OpenAPI, gRPC, and WCF endpoints. We're not going to spend time on that today. We're going to focus on the top part, which is Service Dependencies. And that helps me connect to Azure Services and SQL Server. Um, so right now, my application is not connected to anything. And it says so right here. And I'm going to click Add a Service Dependency to get started. So let's take a look at some of my options here. The first two items on the list are referring to application insights. The first option is a local only option that is only available during F5 when I'm debugging my application. And the second option is letting me connect to an actual live instance of application insights. Now, the reason why on this screen I'm getting some local options is that because when I'm configuring things to connected services, I'm configuring how my application is going to behave during F5. Those, some of these options are not going to make a lot of sense during publish, so they're not going to be there. Uh, following on on the list, the next three options are about Azure Storage. The first two are two local-only emulator options. Uh, one of them is going to run the Azureite emulator, as it's called, in a container. The other one is going to run the Azureite emulator uh, just straight up on the machine. And finally, the third option is going to let you connect to Azure Storage, a real live instance. Then moving down the list, we have Azure Signal R service, which is, again, connecting to a real live service in Azure. We have a local option for dealing with application secrets. You can use the secrets.json file, which is the default way of keeping application secrets outside of your source repo. Then we have the ability to use Azure Key Vault. And actually, Visual Studio is smart enough to let you use secrets.json locally. And when the time comes to publish, to switch that out for using Key Vault. We'll see how to do that later. Then we have the ability to connect to Azure App Configuration, which is just another way of uh, centralizing all your application configuration. And it even integrates with Key Vault, so that's pretty cool. Then we have three options for SQL Server. Uh, SQL Server Express Local DB, that's a local only option. It's very popular for doing local development with SQL Server. Then we have Azure SQL Database, which is connecting to a live instance of Azure, uh, Azure SQL Database online. And we also have the ability to connect your application to SQL Server Database on-prem. Maybe you have an instance on your local machine or on the network. Then we have two options for Redis Cache. One is a local emulation option again. It's going to run in a container. The other one is going to connect to a live instance of Azure. And finally, we have Azure Cosmos DB and Microsoft Identity Platform that lets you um, achieve authentication through Azure Active Directory. All right, so I'm going to keep things simple here. And I'm going to uh, configure my application to connect to SQL Server Express Local DB. I click Next, and I get to give a name to my connection string. I'm going to say my connection to SQL. And here, Visual Studio is helping me manage that application secret, the connection string value. Ideally, I don't want it in my code base. So I can either, by default, put it in the user secrets file, or I can even integrate with Key Vault. Uh, this is basically the equivalent of me adding a dependency to Key Vault and then putting the value in there. I just don't have to do that manually. VS can do that for me. I'm going to keep things simple and use my uh, local user secrets file locally. And now I get a little summary page that is going to tell me what is VS doing on my behalf. So it's telling me it's going to get the right Nuke package. It's going to put the value in the right secret store. And because it's SQL Server, it doesn't need to prepare the code base in any way. So that's nice. I can just click Finish. It will give me a little summary of everything that it did. And now it's telling me that my application is configured correctly to talk to SQL Server local DB. Let's do that one more time. And now let's add a connection to storage. Now, I could connect to a live Azure storage instance, but locally, I want to emulate things. So I'm going to pick the storage Azure emulator. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to give my connection string name as well, my connection to storage. Same options with uh, the application secret. I click Next. And in the summary page, it's telling me that it's going to do the same things as before. This is now an extra step to also prepare my code base to be ready to consume the Azure service. 
uh, didn't need it for SQL Server, but I do need it for storage. And it's really nice that Visual Studio will just take care of all of that for me. Just click Finish here, get my little summary of exactly what's going on. And now my, my application is configured with very few clicks to consume Azure Storage and SQL Server, and I'm ready to write my business logic. Now, at this point, I can go to Publish. I can create a new Publish profile, pick Azure and App Service Linux as my deployment target. And here, Visual Studio is letting me manage all of my Azure resources without leaving the ID. If I have multiple accounts that I'm logged in with, I can switch uh, over to the different accounts. If I'm logged in with multiple subscriptions, I can uh, change the subscription. Um, I can search for instances that already exist and, and pick them. I can group things by resource group, which is very helpful for people who want to keep everything in a, the same resource group. Or I can just do a flat list by resource name. And of course, I can always provision new resources without leaving the ID. Now, I don't want to do that in this case. I already have an instance created, so I'm just going to pick it from the list and click Finish. So Visual Studio now has a published profile that is ready for me to use immediately. So if I want to, I can just click Publish, and Visual Studio is going to do the right thing. It's going to build the app and publish it to App Service successfully. And that's why the status is ready to publish. But I've already told Visual Studio that I am connecting to SQL Server and Storage. And it's smart enough to know that locally, I'm connecting to basically emulation options, the Storage Emulator and the SQL Server Local DB. So it knows that's not going to work. That's not going to be successful when I'm deploying my application to Azure, because even though Publish is successful and the application will be there, when it starts to run and tries to access the resources, it's not going to be able to. So at the bottom of the page here, we have our service dependencies list. Again, the same list as we had before in Connected Services tab. We now have it in this published profile. And VS is telling me that this is good to go as soon as I configure it. So I just need to hook it up to an instance that is available in that environment. If I just click Configure, it knows that Azure SQL Database is probably what I want to do. So it has filtered the list to just that and pre-selected it for me. I can click Next. And now I'm immediately in Select an Existing Instance to connect to. It's the most common scenario. That's why we default into it. But like I said, you can always provision new Azure instances without leaving the ID. So here, I'm just going to pick an instance that I already, already have and connect to it. I'm going to keep my connection string the same. And I'm just going to provide the username and password uh, that I know I can use to connect to this instance. When I click Next, it's going to give me a summary of what it's about to do, and I'm going to click Finish. It's giving me a running summary of what it's doing right now. And now this uh, connection has been configured correctly. All I have to do is go to the next one and do the same thing for storage. Again, I can provision a new instance, but I don't have to. I can just pick an existing one right now. I'm going to keep the same connection string name, of course. The appropriate connection string value is automatically figured out by VS. I don't even have to worry about it. I can just click Next. A little summary of what's going to happen. Click Finish. And now my application is all set up and correctly configured to run this environment. Now when I do Publish, application is going to uh, it's going to end up in App Service successfully. Once it starts running, it's going to access the appropriate connection strings with the configuration, and my application will be able to run successfully. All right. Well, that was fun. Um, I hope you guys had, uh, had fun with me as well and learned something new. Uh, we're constantly adding more support for more integrations. We're adding support for more Azure services, uh, and we're dying to hear your feedback. So let us know what you think. Um, tweet at us. Uh, let us know through the developer community. Uh, just know the world was listening. So thank you very much. Take care.